Good evening, directors, staff, and members of the public listening, and Ramadan Mubarak to all who celebrate. I will now call this April 13th, 2021 business meeting to order. We'll begin tonight by acknowledging that buildings within Minneapolis Public Schools are located within the traditional homelands of the Dakota people. Minnesota comes from the Dakota name for this region, Minnesota Makoche, translating to the land where the waters reflect the skies or cloudy waters. MPS recognizes the original peoples of this place and are committed to make ongoing efforts to educate the community about the relationship that Dakota people have to this area, both historically and today as they remain here in their home. Thank you. I must also recognize that we are gathering here tonight, once again, in the aftermath of a lethal force police killing of a black man in our state, Mr. Dante Wright. We are here again with a crushing weight, weight piled upon our shoulders as we also watch and await the outcome of the trial of, for the man who killed Mr. George Floyd. We again find ourselves watching a life taken, witnessing the unbearable grief of a mother, a family, and a community, replaying how this could be our son, our brother, our father, or our friend. Once again, being told how to react how to mourn, how to behave while trying to survive. Each of us will find our own way to move forward. For me, it is focusing on our students, our children who so desperately need us right now. They need to know they are deeply loved, are worthy, and despite what actions show them over and over, their lives matter. They need to see us doing everything we possibly can to change this. For our children, families, and society, we somehow keep going. We teach, we mourn, we support, we create space, we act, we build a better system. Humanity recognizes this is unacceptable. It doesn't have to be like this. We shouldn't have to fight so hard to not be killed. Dante Wright should still be alive. George Floyd should still be alive. Philando Castile should still be alive. Jamar Clark should still be alive. Thurman Blevins Jr. should still be alive. Terrence Franklin should still be alive. Travis Jordan should still be alive. So many should still be with us. Our lives do matter. Our children's lives matter. Black lives matter. Thank you. Due to the current local, state, and federal emergency declarations and guidance regarding the COVID-19 pandemic, this meeting of the Minneapolis Board of Education is being conducted in accordance with Minnesota Statute 13D.021, with members participating remotely via electronic means. This meeting is being live streamed on our website and on channel 15, and a recording will be available in both places. Before we begin, I'll note some legal and process expectations for both the board and the public listening. First, as required by law, we will take every vote by roll call. I will ask the clerk to call the roll by district order followed by at-large members. Second, board members, please mute yourselves when not talking to avoid background noise. Third, during discussions, please use the raise your hand feature to be recognized. And finally, for the benefit of all of us, but in particular for our interpreters and those using closed captions, please remember to speak clearly, slowly, and into your microphone. Director Polly, will you please call the roll? Director Arneson. Here. Director Alameen. Here. Director Ali. Here. Director Surya. Here. Director Inns. Here. Director Jordan. Here. Director Caprini. Here. Director Polly's here. Chair Ellison. Here. Student Rep. Gabor Meskel. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Next, we will approve our agenda for the evening. As we adopt the agenda, I will note that it's my intention to finish our meeting by 7.30, 7.45 to respect those breaking fast tonight. Director Arneson, will you please move approval of the agenda? So moved. May I have second with last name for the record? 
Ali. Elamay. Thank you. Our agenda has been moved and seconded. If there's any discussion, please raise your hand to be recognized. Seeing no hands, Director Polly, will you please call the roll on the agenda? Director Arneson. Aye. Director Alamine. Yes. Director Ali. Yes. Director Surio. Yes. Director Inns. Yes. Director Jordan. Yes. Director Caprini. Aye. Director Polizzi. Yes, Chair Ellison. Yes, thank you. That motion carries and we have an approved agenda. Director Polly, will you please move approval of the minutes before us? So moved. May I have a second with last name for the record? Ali. Thank you. The minutes as presented for the March 9th and March 23rd meetings have been moved and seconded. If there's any discussion, please raise your hand to be recognized. Seeing no hands, clerk, will you please call the roll on the minutes? Director Arneson. Aye. Director Alamine. Yes. Director Ali. Yes. Director Surio. Yes. Director Inns. Yes. Director Jordan. Yes. Director Caprini. Aye. Director Polizzi, yes, Chair Ellison. Yes, thank you. That motion carries and the minutes have been adopted. Next, we will hear from members of the public. As we have done throughout the pandemic, public comments for tonight's meeting were accepted by voicemail. Messages will be played in the order they were received. I will now ask staff to please play the public comments. Thank you. Gary Marvin Davison, New Salem Educational Initiative, serving students whom you academically abused during the daytime. Extended comments may be found at New Salem Education.blogspot.com. My book, Understanding the Minneapolis Public Schools Current Condition Future Prospect, is now in the hands of Federal Reserve Head Minneapolis, uh, Neil Kashkari. And in many quarters, there are many people who are finding out the uh, true problems of K-12 education at the Minneapolis Public Schools and more broadly across the United States. There are two themes that are especially important to understand. Academic insubstantiality extends from the U.S. Department of Education down to the Minnesota Department of Education and certainly through all academic leadership at the Minneapolis Public Schools. The second theme is that national policy has very little to do with any academic progress that students may make in the United States. Impact is limited to admirable gender equity issues and serving students with disabilities and such. But no policy made at the national or state level will ever have any impact. So it falls to people at the Minneapolis Public Schools, those who are understanding where the true problems are to take action. And I just want everybody to know, as I have told uh, my former best friend at the district, the only friend I have when it comes to the future of my babies is the truth. Take note, do your research, read my blog, understand the issues, and it is morally incumbent upon Every Good afternoon. My name is Andrea Blade, and I am calling from PPL, Project for Pride and Living. My comments are the achievement gap has increased due to the pandemic to a mudslide. Learning loss will be the greatest among our BIPOC students. It will extend years beyond the pandemic. COVID-19 has increased high school dropout rates. This will impact lifetime earnings, health, and incarceration rates and levels for our families. Minneapolis Public Schools needs a long-term plan to reach these opportunity youth. A plan is also needed for summer school and out-of-school time partners. These funds allow, the funds that Minneapolis Public Schools will receive will allow uh, Minneapolis to dream big and be innovative and provide programs to encourage ongoing learning over the summer months. Academics should be added to all summer programs uh, for the summer. 
Also, take a look at increasing your mental health services are needed for our students coping with the pandemic stress. This is not a one and done. Our families are still struggling. And then how do we help them along the way long term? Last thing is that updated laptops, tablets, and a great band, uh, broadband uh, Broadband internet services are needed for all of our students, just not for some. And that should be something done for this, especially if we're still going to be doing uh, virtual or even if we're even doing with our students coming back, our students still have to learn at home. Thank you for the opportunity. Hello, my name is Brian Taylor. I'm the director of the NAS board. I'm calling in relation to the $181 million in funds to be received by Minneapolis public schools from the elementary and secondary school emergency relief program. I want to encourage the board to invest these funds in accordance with the recommendations of the Advancing Equity Coalition. As such, I would encourage you to consider four factors in your decision making, transparency, accountability, equity, and innovation. Specifically on transparency, Please consider budgeting for a system to publicly share how this money will be spent as well as how the $100 million of CARES money was spent. Accountability. Please consider making public your plan on how to invest the ESSER funds and how to track the outcomes of those investments. Equity. It is widely known that the learning loss from the pandemic disproportionately impacted students who were already underserved. Please consider targeting these funds on investments in, student, in support of students of color, special education students, homeless and highly mobile students, Title I schools, and racially identifiable schools. Finally, innovation. Please consider investing these funds boldly in an effort to address the shameful opportunity and achievement gaps that have existed far too, for far too long in our community. You should invest in things like grow your own teacher efforts to create more teachers of color, capital improvements to expedite major projects to improve the learning environment of our students, summer and out-of-school time partners to expand their reach and support recovery of learning loss, update the curriculum of and expand ethnic studies to younger students to create better global citizens, and update technology to become a one-to-one -one technology district to allow flexibility for students unable to be in the classroom and to increase access to opportunities outside of, of the school building. Thank you for your consideration. My name is Art Romick. I'm former director of research at the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis, senior fellow at the Humphrey School of Public Affairs, and on a number of local boards, including the Northside Achievement Zone, Close Gaps by Five, and Way to Grow. Uh, my relationship with the Mini, uh, Minneapolis School District actually goes back many years as an informal advisor to former superintendents John Davis, Carol Johnson, and Bernadia Johnson in particular. I understand that there may be up to $181 million in federal money for school relief that Minneapolis school districts will be getting, and I'm hoping that you will use at least part of these funds to promote high-quality pre-K throughout the Minneapolis school district. And why would I argue that? Why would I promote that? Well, as you know, Minnesota has one of the largest achievement gaps in the country. Science shows that the first years, birth to five, are critical critical for brain development. Research also shows that when a child starts school ready, uh, that they are much more likely to succeed in school, in life. And actually, we now have research to show that the children of the children do much better when their parents have succeeded in school. Um, we've also found that when children start school ready, they're much less likely to need special ed. They're much, much less likely to be retained in a grade. Recent study out of North Carolina showed that their poverty schools, when they were aligned with a high-quality, parent-aware type, four-star rated program, they didn't have an achievement gap in the third grade. And teacher turnover went way down. So again, I urge you to consider using that $181 million, at least part of it, for high-quality pre-K in your school districts. Thank you for this opportunity to, to make these points, and thank you for all the work that you do. Hi, my name is Sandra Samuels, and I am president and CEO of the Northside Achievement Zone. And I am calling about the um, decision that the school board will make around the elementary and second 
Dairy School Emergency Relief uh, money that that the district will be receiving over the next three years, and I'm call- and I'm also a part of the Advancing Equity Coalition. And um, the main thing is, I know you all have a lot of decisions to make, and like everybody else, just asking that um, that as you make decisions about where to invest the money, that you keep transparency, accountability, innovation, and equity, racial equity, in mind as you develop the plan. Um, it is so critical for um, for us all to know in a real transparent way um, how the money is being spent and, I, and, and to get input um, that you have a plan in terms of how um, you the district can be held accountable for how those dollars are spent. Um, and, of course, I'm hoping that there will be great innovation, um, thinking about how to fully educate all of our kids, particularly um, those who are being left most behind, um, like, children in North Minneapolis, and, uh, and that gets into the racial equity, that, um, that we really, we know the disproportionate impact in terms of the students who are not um, being educated um, at the rate that other students are in your district. And, um, and so this, if you factor in racial equity, knowing that the students who are being most educated are white and more affluent, and the students who are being least educated are black and less affluent and brown. And so if you would take all of these factors uh, in mind, that would, um, I think, really um, change, transform, and improve education for all our kids. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Claire Sanford, and I am an early childhood professional who works with New Horizon Academy. Uh, We have several schools in Minneapolis, and I also work with the Northside Achievement Zone. And I just wanted to call in and urge that as as plans are created specifically for the ESSER money, which we're all thankful the district is getting, that equity, innovation, accountability, and transparency be top of mind. Um, transparency, obviously, we need to know how this new ESSER money is planned to be spent, in what areas, and also how the CARES money was spent. We would like to see a very big focus on equity and our students of color who we know have been more impacted um, during the pandemic than almost anyone. And particularly in in terms of using these funds in innovative ways, uh, particularly we're interested in really looking at more grow your own opportunities so we get many more teachers of color. I'm a former licensed elementary school teacher myself. This is incredibly important to have to have more teachers that reflect our students. And also this year showed us that technology is not a luxury (laughs) anymore. So becoming a one-to-one district, so all students have the flexibility no matter what we're facing, whether it's weather or a pandemic or anything else, to not be in school but can still have access to those learning opportunities is huge. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Holly Craig Burp Shirley, and I'm a Minneapolis Public Schools parent. And I just wanted to encourage the board to um, consider transparency, accountability, innovation, and equity when you are developing your plan for the federal funds that you've received, the $180 million for the ESSA funds. And I would just encourage you to bring diverse voices to the table to develop a plan. Um, that has input from educators and parents who are most affected by the pandemic and the learning loss for which the funds are intended. And I would encourage you to um, invest in the Grow Your Own program to flood our teacher candidate pipeline with teachers of color and consider summer school and out-of-school learning time um, investments in partners who are getting effective results in closing learning gaps and to consider updates for technology, especially as students are continuing to work um, and to school in a hybrid setting. I appreciate you and your hard work and look forward to partnering with you as you make these decisions about this incredible investment in our community. Thank you. Uh, 
I want to thank all those who took the time to share their perspectives with us. Thank you very much. Next, I'm going to turn it over to Superintendent Graff for any reports and recommendations. Superintendent Graff, go ahead. Good evening, Chair Allison, Student Representative Deborah Meskel, Board Directors, staff and members of the public uh, joining us tonight. I was uh, looking forward to beginning tonight's meeting with some good news because Monday was the first day of in-person learning for our high school students in more than a year, uh, as well as we're uh, beginning Ramadan. But as, uh, as mentioned already by Chair Ellison, um, it's been the case too many times over the past year that we have to acknowledge, begin tonight by acknowledging that while many of our high schools did in fact successfully return to in-person learning yesterday and today, they did it under the weight of yet another uh, pro police related shooting. And of course, uh, this time uh, the victim was former MPS student Dante Wright, another young black man who left, has left us far too soon. Um, I, I guess I wanna acknowledge that the ongoing trauma that's being experienced by staff and students at this time is, is very difficult. Um, we are praying for Dante and his family and all impacted by this most recent tragedy. And our goal as a school district is to intentionally provide spaces where our students can give voice uh, to how they're experiencing the world and how it is affecting them, not only academically, but socially and emotionally as well. And the notion of safety, especially for our young black men seems, seems elusive, uh, but as much as possible, we want to ensure that our classrooms, whether virtually or in person, offer additional safe spaces to help our students heal. So I wanna thank Chair Ellison for your comments uh, beginning this evening and thank you to all of our, our building leaders, our teachers and educators, support staff um, throughout the district, both in the school at the Davis Center and around who are working to do their best to create uh, self safe spaces for our students and our community. I would also like to um, share a little bit of information uh, about our planning um, and what we're doing going forward here in the next couple of weeks. Um, as a result of more than a, a year of distance learning during the pandemic, we know that we need to address the unfinished learning for many of our students. Uh, this is why tonight I'm pleased to share that, that students in Minneapolis grades kindergarten through 12th grade will have more options for, for learning this summer. And you should start to see um, on social media and email, as well as some digital ads about our, our three-pronged uh, summer approach to help our students catch up um, and uh, address some of the, the, the needs they have, both the, the enrichment needs, the engagement needs, and the academic needs, um, so that they're ready for in-person learning again this fall. And there really are three facets to our, uh, our approach. The first is um, our MPS Summer Scholars, uh, which is designed to explore, create, and connect. It's formerly known as Summer School. Uh, summer Scholars provides an innovative, immersive summer experience that's gonna challenge students to you know, explore a world of possibilities both in and outside of the classroom. Uh, summer Scholars is free and open to all students in grades pre-K through eighth grade with both the in-person and virtual options depending on the student's grade. Uh, the second approach is our MPS School Spirit Sports Camp. And this is new this summer. Um, so we're very excited to, to share more information on this in the coming weeks. Um, it's the school spirit sports camp will be available to elementary students in August um, with both morning and afternoon options. And the sports camps are free and adaptive sports will also be available with transportation provided. Um, so we look forward to sharing more information about the, the school spirit sports camps, which will be taking place for our elementary students in August. And then finally, we have our community education super summer. This is a free or very low cost option. Super Summer provides education enrichment, uh, skill building, community, a sense of community, social emotional learning and recreational opportunities, um, all within a, what we refer to as a customizable schedule for families. And so um, excited to share this and encourage everyone to look forward to seeing more information uh, go live on our summer programming website this week. Um, in addition, I want to just kind of share how we are working to expand our Minneapolis Public Schools online school, um, keeping up with our theme of uh, unfinished learning. We're also looking for more information on how our 
online school can be expanded to serve grades kindergarten through 12th grade beginning this fall. Um, as you may know right now, our MPS online serves at grades nine through 12. And so we're looking to have moved to a, um, a citywide option for students and a great option for students and families who prefer or are more successful with an online learning experience. <clears throat> we are currently in the process of finalizing um, our application and submitting that to the Department of Education. Um, we'll also then be working to finalize our registration process, the course guide for uh, MPS online school. So we'll have more information available in the next couple of weeks, um, but very excited again to, to expand our online offering um, to, to go to kindergarten through 12th grade beginning this fall. Um, I also mentioned at our last board meeting um, that we've seen a resurgence of hatred and violence directed at Asian Americans due to fear mongering around the, uh, the coronavirus. And uh, we, we certainly know that this has been um, something that has been top of mind internally uh, as we address these concerns, both from a local level in our district, as well as a national level. So tomorrow, Wednesday, April 14th, we're honored to co-host with the Coalition of Asian American Leaders, an online discussion specifically designed to hear from Asian American staff and families. Uh, this will be a public meeting about how anti-Asian racism plays a role in Minneapolis public schools and how Minneapolis public schools can support the Asian American community. Uh, all of our Asian American families in Minneapolis public schools have been um, invited to attend and share their stories to help me and my staff will be present to, to better hear and understand their, their realities. And I know that I look forward to better meeting the needs of our Asian American families and our Asian families in Minneapolis. And I wanna thank specifically uh, Bo Ta Urabe and Kai Ying Yang and the other leaders from uh, Cal for uh, supporting this, this new partnership and this opportunity. Finally, I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, some accomplishments that we've had recently. Uh, I'd like to commend the Boys Nordic Ski Team, uh, the Lakers at Southwest High School for taking home the state championship in uh, the sport of Nordic skiing. Southwest captured uh, the crown with 416 points and it's uh, the third state championship for the Lakers since 2016. In 2016 and 2017, uh, Minneapolis Southwest won back-to-back -back titles and specifically scoring for the Lakers were Cooper Camp, uh, Victor Sparks, Miguel Fresco Hanlon, and Owen Led Lid Linseth. So congratulations to our, our students and your accomplishment. And then now if I, if I can, I would like to just take a minute, um, Chair Ellison, to provide an update on our in-person learning. Um, as you are all aware, we started yesterday with our ninth grade students returning to in-person learning. And uh, today our 10th through 12th graders came back to school. Um, again, just to pause there to reinforce that this has been over a year now since we've had students um, in the secondary schools, nine through 12 in our, in our buildings. And so we're very excited to, to welcome them back into to school. Um, some information around the numbers. Our records show that approximately 5,500 students chose to finish out uh, their, their school year this fourth quarter in person. And this is about um, roughly 55% of our high school student population. So we have nearly 4,400 students still continuing in distance learning uh, for the remainder of the school year. Most of our high schools uh, came back to four days a week with Wednesdays designated for teacher preparation and, and distance learning requirements that we had there um, in support of the governor's executive order. So there are a few schools that are currently operating in a rotating schedule and um, um, those specific schools are doing so, um, again, based on the, the space availability that they have. And we did make the decision to follow through on plans to return to in-person learning after meeting last week with our COVID regional support team and I uh, we'll just want to acknowledge that while well, there's a rising infection rates uh, that are happening across the city and the state, um, we've give you know which should give everyone pause. Um, we know that our mitigation actions, such as face coverings, social distancing, um, again reminding people to wash your hands, uh, avoid touching your face, 
If you are sick, stay home. Um, and of course, once you have a notification of a confirmed case, that you are quarantining and following those quarantining uh, protocols. So with all those things, they have continued to proven uh, to be an effective means of, of helping us mitigate uh, the spread of the virus. And so uh, just wanna reinforce again, my appreciation for all of our educators, our teachers, our leaders who've been working diligently over the last couple of weeks to, to make this possible for our high school students this week. And then of course we have our, our middle school students beginning with our sixth graders on Monday and then our seventh and eighth graders um, joining them on Tuesday and beyond. And then finally, I wanted to uh, highlight that uh, this time of year usually brings about many celebrations. Um, and uh, one of the ways to, to recognize a culmination of a high school experience is through graduation. And so today, um, barring any unforeseen circumstances, we're on track to hold our graduation ceremonies in person, um, but obviously uh, supporting the socially distanced requirements at venues that are large enough to make that possible. Um, so we'll be identifying uh, the Minneapolis Convention Center as one of those locations, um, the University of Minnesota's Mariucci Arena, and uh, um, finally the Cowles Auditorium in downtown Minneapolis. And so specifically uh, plans to date are going to allow two spectators per student. And I know that there are some uh, um, challenges with that in certain families, um, but in order for us to be able to uh, adhere to the the social distancing guidelines and the uh, capacity that we have, um, we can only permit at this time two spectators per student. Um, another key piece is how the graduation ceremony is conducted. And so because we have these venue spaces and we are being very mindful of the um, how we would have to contact MAP or any type of the interaction, uh, the approach will be that students will stand as their names are called rather than walking across the stage. Uh, it's, a, it's a paperless kind of graduation recognition. And then of course, um, as far as how we provide those tickets to spectators, we will have tickets um, being uh, available through an online portal. So um, the dates have been put out there and uh, they're between uh, June 7th through June 10th and final arrangements will be announced very soon uh, but once again, just wanted to make sure I put that out there for families that we are looking to hold an in-person uh, graduation ceremony for our, our 12th grade seniors. And then finally, as mentioned as well, um, just want to wish our uh, Muslim friends, colleagues, families, students, uh, Ramadan Mubarak, uh, we wish you well as we begin this one of the most holy holidays, um, Ramadan Kareem. So with that, Chair Ellison, that concludes my update and I'm happy to answer any questions uh, directors might have about the uh, return to in-person learning. Thank you, Superintendent Graff. Um, directors and student representative, please raise your hand if you have any questions. Okay, great. Seeing no questions, okay, Director Caprini, thank you. Just a super quick one. Um, Superintendent, uh, do you know what uh, sports are gonna be offered for the uh, School Spirit Sports Camp? Director Caprini, thanks for the question. I do not have that information at this time. I know that was something when um, this came forward, we were, we were working very closely with the athletics department to, to flesh that out further. I do not, but I can certainly provide an update to the board um, and most definitely we'll make sure that we share that at our next board meeting as well. Well, that, that's, that's awesome, I love that. I would like to um, put a nod in for lacrosse, um, specifically for um, students on the north side or in northeast and gearing towards girls. Um, we really need to beef up what we're offering um, our young ladies and perhaps even uh, maybe a tumbling um, for gymnastics. Uh, we had a few girls who uh, um, participated um, from North and uh, Henry as well as Edison. And um, we just really need to dig deep and recruit more athletes um, with our girls. Thank you, Director Brini. Uh, Chair Ellison, if I may, I know I have Dr. Fearing who's on here as well. And she's been uh, kind of working to coordinate these summer opportunities. If it's okay, I could ask her maybe to provide just a, a general update at this time around what we have for offerings. That would be great, thank you. Dr. Fearing, if you would mind. 
Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for the question, Director Caprini. Um, what we have right now is um, a lot of team sports with a few individual um, sports as well. This will be going through our community ed, but they're partners, partnering with Minneapolis Athletics to make it all work because really it's called Summer Spirit Sports Camp is because we're looking at including our um, elementary schools that feed into their community high school. So trying to develop that school spirit down at the elementary feeder school all the way up. So, um, so for example, it would be like a Jenny Lind um, who would then be working with Henry High School, right? So it's like trying to firm up that track. So some of the um, opportunities that we have been developing, um, soccer, volleyball, flag football, track, um, track and field, um, but I'll definitely bring your suggestions to uh, community ed. Um, a lot of it is depending on how much staffing we can get um, and the interest of the staffing um, to run the different opportunities. But we're excited for this. We're also looking to um, have our high school athletes help participate so that they're um, utilizing their leadership skills, skills as athletes and working with our elementary students. And of course, we'll have like, you know, fun gear and swag and all that kind of stuff. So excited for this opportunity, but I will bring your suggestions to the community and staff that are working on it. Thank you. That sounds exciting. And I'm glad you're, in, you're including the high school students to build up their leadership skills. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Perry. Thank you, uh, Director Caprini, also for your, your feedback. So thank you, Superintendent. Um, our next item is a report from our policy committee. So Director Polly, will you please go ahead with your committee's report? Sure, uh, thank you, Chair Ellison. For first reading tonight, the policy committee is bringing forward two proposals. The first is a revision of policy 6450 and repeal of policy 3250. Both of these uh, address fees, charge of students and largely reflect state law. The second recommendation is a revision to policy 5600 uh, to update the language to our current formatting standards. This policy is about the process for releasing children from school. That's the committee's report for this month, Chair Ellison. Thank you, Director Polly and policy committee members. Um, directors, please raise your hand if you have any questions or comments on the policy committee report. Okay, we will see both of these items for a vote next month. So thank you, Director Polly. Um, next, we will vote on a couple of items the consent agenda um, and a number of changes to our board governance policies. For the sake of those listening, I'll note again that since this is a meeting um, that's being conducted by electronic means, we must take every vote by roll call. Board members, please unmute yourselves and turn your microphone on when the clerk begins to call the roll so we can be as efficient as possible. First is the approval of the consent agenda. The consent agenda includes routine items that do not involve major policy, budget, or taxing questions, bond awards, or items related to the superintendent's contract or evaluation. Director Caprini, will you please move approval of this item? So moved. Thank you. May I have a second with your last name for the record? I'll leave. Second, Ernie. Thank you. Approval of the consent agenda has been moved and seconded. If there's any questions, please raise your hand to be recognized. Seeing no raised hands, Director Polly, will you please call the roll on the consent agenda? Director Arneson. Aye. Director Elamine. Aye. Director Ali. Aye. Director Cerillo. Yes. Director Inns. Yes. Director Jordan. Yes. Director Cabrini. Aye. Director Polly's yes, Chair Ellison. Yes, thank you. That motion carries and the consent agenda is approved. The other action is a vote on a number of changes to the policies that guide our work as a board. As you will recall, the policy committee spent a number of months developing these recommendations, including inviting the whole board to join their committee meetings. I wanna recognize and thank policy chair Polly for your work on this effort. Director Polly, will you please move approval of the policy changes labeled as Resolution 2021-0013. So moved. Thank you. May I have a second with last name for the record? Second, Arneson. 
Thank you. The policy changes have been moved and seconded. If there's any discussion, please raise your hand to be recognized. Okay, seeing no hands. Uh, clerk, will you please call the roll on the resolution? Director Arneson. Aye. Director Alameen. Yes. Director Ali. Yes. Director Surreo. Yes. Director Inns. Yes. Director Jordan. Yes. Director Caprini. Aye. Director Polizzi, yes, Chair Ellison. Yes, thank you. That motion carries and the resolution is approved. Our final item this evening is time for directors and our student representative to give a brief update on the committees they chair or on any other board related activities. Um, directors, please raise your hand um, if you have a report for this evening, if you'd like to speak. No raised hands. Thank you, Director Surreal. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm giving a report on the AMSD and we had our meeting last Friday, uh, which included a discussion with two Minnesota House uh, members, uh, Republican Representative uh, Lisa DeMuth of uh, Cold Spring and also Democratic Representative uh, Cedric uh, Fraser. And they highlighted issues that they have been working on. And uh, we also received an update uh, from the House and the Senate Education Omnibus bills. The two bills have significant differences, uh, most notably the overall spending in each uh, bill. The House bill allocates $725 million to schools, while the Senate allocates 152. So it's a huge disparity. <laughs> And uh, so the House uh, bill increases and uh, the general education aid formula by 2% uh, each year and links the formula to inflation beginning the fiscal year of 2026. Uh, the bill also makes significant investments in ELL funding, which is great, and uh, special education too. And will allow districts to renew existing uh, referenda without having to hold another election. The Senate bill does not contain a general formula increase or any additional ELL uh, or special education funding. It creates a type of voucher using education savings account, which could be used um, in private uh, schools. Uh, the bill also includes 60 million in one-time aid that will largely go to districts that receive little or no federal uh, American Rescue Plan aid. And uh, finally, we also heard from uh, appalling results from uh, Peter, Le Peter Letterman. We showed uh, Minnesota's uh, changing views in, on the pandemic restrictions, uh, school learning models, and the need uh, to support students as we emerge from the pandemic. And another thing that also was very uh, um, concerning to me was the reality of uh, how our state is uh, shifting so much to a very conservative mindset. So that's uh, my report. Thank you. Thank you, Director Surreal. Um, any other reports or comments from board members? Seeing none, Director Arneson, can I please get a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Thank you. Can I get a second with last name for the record? Okay, Caprini. A motion to adjourn has been moved and seconded. Will the clerk please call the roll? Director Arneson. Aye. Director Alameen. Director Alameen. Yes. Dr. Ali. Yes. Dr. Surya. Yes. Dr. Inns. Yes. Dr. Jordan. Yes. Dr. Caprini. Aye. Dr. Polly's yes, Dr. Ellison. Yes, thank you. That motion's approved. We are adjourned. Good night, everybody, and Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan Mubarak to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.